The deacon takes the grace of the altar to the streets and brings the needs of the streets to the altar. Deacons can baptize, witness marriages. At Mass, we can preach and proclaim the gospel. Our formation program to prepare the men for ordination is five years in length. The formation uh, uh, that I went through for the last five years, uh, it was really an eye-opening experience for me. We started right away with the Old Testament and then the New Testament. Obviously, we're not in seminary like the priests are, but there is a very, very involved study. The spiritual part is spiritual direction, prayer, uh, who I am developing my own spirituality uh, in a very deep way. And the service part, which is critical to diaconate, is being out there in the streets, taking care of people. I think that's something that we really focus on. Um, Deacon Frank and our, our operations have really said, this is what you need to do. Be in the streets, get your hands dirty, as, as Pope Francis talks about. Most of our deacons, 95%, are married. And the church recognizes that as an important gift to the church. Our wives go through everything that we do, all the studies, all the preparations. They're just as important, if not more important, than the deacon themselves to make sure that the family stays together, that we stay online. My wife, Yvonne, has been attending all the classes and she's been accompanying me to the detention service uh, at jails, the hospitals. My wife, tremendous support for me. She's been there the whole way. One, one day she says to me, she says, you know, I realized something today. She says, I realize you may have a calling to the diaconate, but I have a calling to be a wife of a deacon. The ritual of ordination for clergy, in this case, diaconate, is beautiful, very much rooted in the customs of the church, in the rituals of our church. The ordination was, I'm still not over it. I, I still can't even believe what happened at the time. It's so surreal that we were just going through the process. To me, my most favorite part of ordination was the litany of saints, because here we're, we're asking the, the saints and we're asking Mary and we're asking God to, to, to take us in his arms and, and to, to pray for us. As you're face down on the altar, you can feel or smell the floor, the dirt, the fact that this is where we're called to be, like Pope Francis says, we're to be getting dirty with the sheep. I was sobbing on the ground, but it wasn't crying out, out of tears or anxiety. It was just, I was so joyful. I was just felt like, you know, God had his hands on me. It was like, wow. It is extremely emotional to see your wife and your kids. And it's not just my achievement, it's it's everybody's achievement. That it's just, it's important that we all um, have that emotional love bond. And, and it was indescribable. My mom, who's 92 years old and was able to come and, and attend, it was a very special moment. But it was also the feeling that, okay, uh, now it's time to start. Each of the classes chooses a name to signify who they are. And this class shows salt and light from scripture, where Jesus tells us to be the salt and light for the earth. And so we pray that these men and their wives and their families and their parishes can be salt and light for the church and for the world. I'm hoping just to be a deacon that's present to the community, to bring the grace of the altar as we've been told to the streets or to the community, and to bring the community needs to the altar. The title isn't isn't to elevate me to any level of importance, honestly. Really, it's, it's to remind me of what I'm supposed to do, what my role is. And I look forward to, to doing what I can to, to help bring the Word of God to the people and to serve the Lord. It is uh, amazing how the people in my community have reacted to me being introduced as a deacon. And anything that they would need from me, I, I intend to be there for them to actually give a true homily and, and to stand in front of your congregation with the stole on and with the out. It's a beautiful experience. And I do think that it's not really us speaking, it's the, the Holy Spirit working through us to, to help our congregations really see that, that there's more to it than just sitting in the pews and we need to go out and live the life that Christ asks us to live.